Valentine's stories and tips, campus events, and all the details from the Grammys. We have it all covered here for you guys. I'm Domi Moran, and you guys are watching our second episode of Sundial's Live Cast. So here with me today is Lifestyle Editor Susan Chisholm. As you guys may know, Valentine's is coming up this weekend and we just went all out decorating our studio. Yeah, as you can see, we have some pink banners, we got our Life Clash banner, super adorable. Yeah, that is so cute. We're definitely going to stick to that for the rest of the episodes. Now, I know many of you are looking forward to Valentine's this weekend, but there are some people that just hate it because of horrible dates they've had in the past. Have you ever experienced a horrible date? I've been lucky and not have an awful date, but my first day with my current boyfriend was pretty awkward, but it worked out. That's good, it worked out. <laughs> yeah. Um, we actually had the Sundial reporter, Kathleen Johnson, go out and talk to a few CSUN students about their horrible dates. One of these stories comes from Elisa Dominguez. Yeah, she got stood up by her boyfriend on Valentine's Day, but that wasn't even the worst part. She actually, he actually ended up showing up with another girl. No way. That's, I mean, that's the worst in my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she told us that her boyfriend had promised her a romantic Valentine's date. In the last minute, he ended up canceling on her, telling her that he needed to go to work instead. Having no plans, Dominguez decided that she would go to work as well, which at the time she was working at the local movie theater. Assuming that she was not going to be there, her boyfriend came by the movie theater, not to surprise her, but to another girl. Really rough. I can't even imagine that happening to me. But, um, you know, we've all been down that road, and we all have those stories, so if you want to share yours, be sure to comment down below, let us know, we're all in this together. We want to hear your stories for sure. Definitely. Now, moving on to something lighter. For the ones who love Valentine's, we have chosen simple date ideas for all types of couples. Lauren Rife broke it down for us. Here are a couple of ideas. For the adventure couple, you can go on a getaway to Lake Hollywood Park and have a picnic for two. For the more romantic couple, instead of doing dinner and movies like most others, why not go to Santa Monica Pier, where you can enjoy the beach, the rides, and capture some cute pictures with your date. For the nerdy couple, you guys can get your game on at Ultrasound Lays to tag and share your notes. And finally, if you're more of the type of to stay home, you can cook a meal for a sipping other, or if you love video games, we have a list of games you can try out, such as Borderlands, Minecraft, and L.A. Noire. If you want more details for all your stories, you can go to sundial.csun.edu. So for campus events you guys should be looking out for, there's Noon Time Concert. They host this every Thursday from 12 to 1 p.m. at Plaza del Sol, USU. Another event you guys should check out is Karaoke Nights, which will be held on Wednesday, February 11th from 8 to 10 p.m. at the USU Games Room. So now for sports, here's Lauren Bennett. Thanks, Dalmi. We have an exciting week in sports coming up. Tomorrow, the women's CSUN basketball team is hosting Cal Poly at 7 p.m. On Friday, baseball has their season opener against Utah Valley at 2 p.m. And Friday night, the men's volleyball team is playing Cal State Long Beach at 7 p.m. Baseball continues on Valentine's Day for a doubleheader at 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Saturday night, the CSUN men's basketball team takes on the Gauchos at 7 p.m. And fun fact for the week is that the women's CSUN basketball team is averaging 66 points per game, while the men are averaging 63 points per game. And that's it for your sports update. I'm Lauren. The Grammys took place on Sunday, February 8th at the Staples Center in Los Angeles. This year's award ceremony was filled with surprises and took a unique approach compared to years past. There were performances by several unexpected artists, which included ACDC, who opened the show, Tony Bennett collaborating with Lady Gaga, Stevie Wonder, and many more. So I am here today with Christine Melise, and I'm the Culture Clash editor. And I'm Cecilia Chisholm, the Lifestyle editor. So what did you guys think about the Grammys? I thought it was great. Um, had a lot of like slow performances, but it was nice. It was different than like I think other Grammys. Yeah. I really think Sam Smith deserved winning all those awards because he is an amazing artist. I love his voice. He was well deserving. Well, that was actually what I was going to ask you guys. <laughs> um, Sam Smith, what do you think about him? Do you I, think he deserved winning all those awards? I think he did. Um, I think just people were surprised. He came out of nowhere and some he like managed to snatch up like the most popular mm -hmm. awards, like Record of the Year, Song of the Year, yeah, Best Pop definitely. Album, I believe. Okay. But I mean, it's good, you know, getting his name out there. Yeah. But what were your best performances of the night? 
I definitely like the ACDC one only because <laughs> I've been, yeah, I've, I've been I a big fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. ACDC. I grew um, up listening to them, so my mm-hmm. favorite. I think I also liked Miranda Lambert, you know, the mm-hmm. performance she gave. Yeah. Just because, like, all the songs, I don't know if, like, anybody else noticed this, but all the songs were, like, soulful. And, yeah, they yeah, were. You know, so it was only a couple of people that did, like, you know, more upbeat. Yeah. Miranda Lambert, I think Madonna. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I think that's one of my only complaints is that there was a lot of ballads this year and that that kind of slowed down the Grammys. I I love ballads. Well, I mean, there's one big controversy, of course, we need to talk about. (laughs) Yes, I think think we know what that is. and Kanye West. Yes. (laughs) So, at first, it seemed like he was joking around. He went on stage and, you know, then he just came back. He didn't really say anything when Beck went up to get his award. But later on, he actually did have some words to say, and he was basically saying that he did not think he should have won, yeah. exactly. that he should have given his award to Beyonce, and he doesn't see him as a true artist. What do you yeah. guys think about that? that? I don't think that's fair, because Beck has been around for a long time. Long yeah. time. Very, very long time. <laughs> so for him to say that, it's like, who are you to say when he got mad that mm-hmm. he didn't get a nomination a couple years ago? Mm-hmm. Like, I think everyone's entitled to their own opinion, and it shouldn't be like, well, Beyonce should win, and like well not everyone loves Beyonce yeah I just think like Kanye like doesn't like I don't hate him but I don't love him either and it's just kind of him being rude about these situations so the whole Taylor Swift fiasco that happened and then this year it's just it's Mm -hmm. I can't I can't have respect for someone who doesn't have respect for other artists like it's great that you're going to defend Beyonce that's awesome like defend your friends and like if you think that she deserved it then talk about it but don't try to interrupt other people with accepting their award. And in a way, it's kind of like trying to compete genres, too. Like, he's mm-hmm. saying that rock isn't as good as hip-hop or R&B. So. Yeah, and that's also the yeah. problem with these kind of awards, that you're putting these different genres against each other. It's like, how do you compare yeah. R&B to rock to pop to rap? Yeah. like or indie or whatever. Yeah, like, how does that yeah. transfer over? Yeah. Exactly. Let's move on to something more lighter <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fashion. There. so take it away okay. fashion. so my top three picks for best dress is katie perry and she was wearing zuhair Murad. it was so beautiful because i loved her hair it just went perfectly with the dress mm-hmm. even though the dress is a little see-through <laughs> it's okay i really loved it i think her lavender hair is my favorite hair color that she has. I, I agree i definitely I like love it that lot. one um then my second pick is taylor swift wearing ellie Saab. Now, I first I didn't really like it because I didn't like the color combination of the like blue, green, and the purple mm-hmm. shoes. But I ended up really liking it because it was something different and she kind of took a risk with it. Yeah. So, loved it. So, we're going to talk about the worst um, <laughs> Grammy kind of outfits. So first, we have Iggy Zalea wearing Rizzi Armani. Her <laughs> hair, I know, that was, it, yeah. it sparked a lot of jokes the entire weekend of like, people putting birds in it, the, like, comparing eggs. it to bread. <laughs> It was, it was just bad. I don't know how she decided to pick that hairstyle. Yeah. And lastly, we got Rihanna wearing Gian Battista Valley <laughs> Couture. I, you know, it's just, it didn't do anything for her. It didn't accentuate anything. It was just like a big blob. She's worn a lot of amazing things in the past. Like, even if she's like being daring and like showing a lot of skin, it's yeah. still, she stood out. She stood out again this way, but not in like probably the best way possible. That's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's true. I think we all agree with that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all for today, you guys. We hope you guys enjoyed our show. And we would love to hear from you guys on what you thought about the Grammy. So comment below. Just please don't forget to comment below. We would love to hear all of your comments. I'm Delmi Moran. I'm Christine. And I'm Cicely. So have a great Valentine's Day. And overall, just have a great weekend. Bye. <laughs>